Welcome to the Jill on Money Coronavirus Market Update. It is Thursday, September 3rd, and we are here to help navigate these trying financial, economic, and let's be honest, health times. If you have a question, please do send us a note. It's askjill at jillonmoney.com. And of course, you can always just reach us through our website, which is jillonmoney.com. We've got a contact button in the upper right corner. That's what Stacy did. She says, I love the daily podcast. I love it so much that I recommended it to my mom and dad who are just getting into the podcast scene. Love that. They watch you on CBS. They think you're a genius. Mm. Well, God love them. But anyway, more genius than their daughter, apparently. My dad reached out to me about some life insurance advice. As we were discussing it, he said, maybe you would be a good source of info because I wasn't too helpful and I'm a lawyer. I'm laughing. This is so funny. Only a daughter could talk about it this way. Admittedly, life insurance, not my specialty. I don't own it. I don't have experience. Okay. So Jill, here's the info. You can step in and be the financially astute daughter my dad wished he'd had. Oh, don't be so rough on yourself. But anyway, my parents are in their 80s. Oh, awesome, by the way, 80s and they're podcasting. Dad's 85, mom's 81. They're active and healthy. Mom's been struggling with breast cancer for many years, literally 30 years or more, on and off. She's got it under control and she is able to lead an active and normal lifestyle, goes in for tests periodically. Dad currently has a New York life, whole life policy. He's had it since 1993. Death benefit is $150,000 with a paid up addition of $60,000 and an accumulated adjustment of $9,000. The total benefit now is $218,000. Mom's a primary beneficiary. My brother and I are secondary or contingent. The cash value, $107,000 with $48,000 of paid up additions and accumulated adjustments. Gross cash value, $160,000. The annual premium is about $4,300. It's been paid out of the annual dividend. That's awesome. This is when whole life starts to work. The uh, cost basis is about $64,000. I'm going to explain this to everybody for a second. They put $64,000 in, okay? And right now there's $160,000 of value. So just remember that 64 in 160 of value. Don't think about the death benefit right now. Dad is thinking about whether he should surrender the policy and get the cash out. He's aware that if he were to die, the cash value goes back to the insurance company. Cashing out would be a taxable event. His accountant indicated that much of it would be tax-free return on principal up to the amount of the premiums paid. Dividend and capital gains would be taxed. They aren't in need of cash currently. He's struggling with whether to pay cash now, pay some tax and invest, or just keep it going for the death benefit. I also suggested approaching the life insurance company to see if they can add the cash value to increase the death benefit so that the cash value, which is sizable, doesn't disappear on death. Okay. The beauty of whole life is once you've dug that hole so deep, It is hard to get out, but once you do get out, this is when the policy works, right? So it's 1993, wind the clock up, and it's now finally working. What you don't actually provide us is with an idea of what's going on in your parents' financial life. You said they don't need the cash, but here's my question. What other assets do they have? Is there liquidity in the estate? I am inclined to not cash this out right now because at this point, it's just like, it's like a bond holding. It's making money and it's clicking away. And so, yeah, I mean, he could have the cash value out and you could do something with it, but unless you need it, why pay the tax due? As opposed to if dad dies, the death benefit of 218,000 passes to your mother and there's no income tax event. There's an estate tax event, but not an income tax event. So I'm inclined to keep it unless I'm missing something. And definitely don't do a 1035 exchange. Do not do that. Don't move into another policy. But it's either keep it or cash it out. I don't think you should cash it out. So this is what I will tell you, Stacey. Uh, You can follow up with me with more details, but I'm inclined to say negative. Just keep the policy in place. I always laugh when people want to cash out policies like my mother. Oh, maybe I don't need the long-term care insurance. I'm like, oh, great. We've paid for it for 20 years. Now at the moment, you think you might actually make a claim that we're not going to keep it? No way. You're keeping it. Okay. Here's a note from MB. 
Hi, Jill. Thanks for all the that you do to help. My hubby and I are 52 and 51 empty nesters. Mortgage, 2600 bucks a month. We're thinking about selling our house. Its value is 525000 We owe 270000 Then we're thinking about renting until retirement in five to eight years, and then would make a move to a different state. No debt but the mortgage, ninety grand in the money market account, last of the child's college covered in a 529. Husband's income, 185. I'm a happy homemaker. 401k, hit a million before COVID, about 910,000 now. Husband's pension at 65 should be eight grand a month. We've got small Roth IRAs, HSA, 25 grand. High property taxes, great school district. Drives us crazy now that we don't have kids in school. Should we downsize? We're comfortable and can make the $2,600 a month mortgage payment easily, but is it smarter for us to rent or buy something smaller? We're going to have to pay realtor commissions and selling costs. Renting can be wasteful, but aren't we also wasting $950 plus $800 on property taxes and interest? Okay. You know what, MB? I love the idea of renting. I think um, the, the big question is, what can you rent and what will the cost be? So if you can go out and find a rental that you would be happy with for the same 2500 2000 to 2500 bucks a month, then yeah, why not? You would have the money. You'd have the cash from the house. So this makes a ton of sense for me. The idea that you want to buy something else, I don't know if you'd buy something else, but I'd like you to rent to see what that feels like. And then you can make a different decision. So it, it you'll have to find out kind of what what's out there and what you can actually do for your rental. But I think this makes sense. Okay. Roger writes, I've grown weary of the up and down roller coaster performance of the stock market. I'm looking for stabilization and way to supply moderate returns in the range of six to 8% from now until I retire in roughly 10 years and beyond. Okay. Stand by Roger for a second. There is no such thing of getting moderate returns in the range of six to 8%. That's great returns. Okay. Moderate return would be like 4%. Okay. So you're not getting off the roller coaster if you think you want six to eight percent. Let me keep going. My wife and I are 55 now. Combined, we've got accumulated about six hundred thousand dollars in our Roth traditional and 401k plans. When retired, I'll have a business to sell. It should net about two hundred thousand dollars. My wife's pension, twenty five hundred dollars a month, and some property that I could sell worth around one hundred fifty thousand and Social Security. We've got no debt. We own our home outright. Is there an investment option out there that we could plug our Roth dollars into that could substantially guarantee the returns I'm looking for without paying the fees associated with an annuity? He signs it tired of the Wall Street pinball machine. I've got one answer for you and it's uh, tilt. You're screwed, dude. There is nothing. I know what you want. It doesn't exist. So if you want to have more guarantee and less of a roller coaster, you can pull your risk back. You can go to a more, say, stock, bond, cash position. You can add you know, a touch of commodities, but you're not going to get 6 to 8% without taking on risk. And I'm so sorry that you're tired of the Wall Street pinball machine, but there you are. Have you run retirement numbers? That's would be really important to me. I mean, you've got the military pension. If you have the military pension, right, and your social security together, and you've got, let's say, 350 grand that you'll have cash adding to your 600 in your Roth that you have right now, that's a million bucks. You'll have more when you retire. But what do you need to live on? If you're really tired of the pinball uh, machine that Wall Street has created, the lever that you can flip is that you can try to spend a lot less money. That is really what I think is the key here. Let me know what your thoughts are. Okay, Joe writes, sadly, my mom passed away recently. She had a will that she left to me and my four siblings. There's also an account that I am the beneficiary of, and it's estimated to be worth $75,000. The entire estate, maybe it's hundred fifty grand. I haven't looked into the account. I don't know if there are any instructions there. My siblings have assumed due to mom's nature that the intent is to split whatever is in the bank equally. I'm not so sure. 
One sibling called me and said I should get the money out of the account and make it available to get through the probate process, have those funds available to update our house before it's sold. Her will is in order. I was named the sole beneficiary. It would have been easy to add the other siblings. All siblings are in their late 50s, early 60s, financially secure. There is also mention of adding a couple of the grandchildren in the will, which scares me. I've been involved in some probate processes. I know the main purpose of probate is to carry out the will as the decedent wished. I think the executor, eldest sister, should hire a lawyer. The four siblings live in the state where we grew up. I moved to another state 30 years ago. I'm not involved in the day-to-day activities. I'm the youngest, therefore always overruled by the older, wiser sibling pack. Your thoughts. Joe, we need an attorney. I wouldn't move a dollar and I would get your own attorney to look at the will. Not that you want to get into a big thing. I don't know if you need the money, you don't need the money, but it seems to me that you're right. Your mom could have made a different, you could have made a very different choice. So I I think you need a a lawyer. This is a legal question. Get a lawyer. Okay. Uh, Last question of the day is from Ken who says, I enjoyed your book and enjoy listening to the pod. About two years ago, my 75-year-old father was forced into retirement after being diagnosed with Alzheimer's. After obtaining durable power of attorney over his financial and other affairs, I discovered that over the years he had spent around $125,000 Purchasing all kinds of coins as an investment. I took an inventory. He's got silver coins that he purchased from dealers. Could be worth something. Purchased some coins from Publishers Clearinghouse. I have no experience in dealing with coins. I'm wondering if you can give me advice on how to sell these without getting ripped off. I was able to file a claim on two disability policies that he had in place. Those payments will stop coming in six months or so. I'd like to be able to convert the coins to spendable cash so we can keep paying the bills. I tried to contact one of the coin dealers from whom he had made a purchase about selling the coins back. Never got a response. No big shock there. Thanks for your time. Keep up the great work, Ken. Physical metals are a pain in the neck. Um, You're going to have to go to a metals dealer, a third party. And unfortunately, that's all you're going to be able to do because, and it's going to cost a lot of money, Uh, but you got to get rid of this. Oh, good luck. All right. That's it. That's the program. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget, if you go to our website to jillonmoney.com, you can find all sorts of nifty information, including the brand new furry fan section. Check it out. Send us your pictures of your dogs, your cats. I mean, even if your fish are not furry, we'll put them up there anyway. Send us your pets. We love your pets. We love our pets. Thank you so much for listening. Wash your hands, wear your masks, maintain your physical distancing, and please try to do something nice for somebody else today. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.